I would, uh, I mean, I would just go out with a pen knife. Uh, you don't, it doesn't need any sharp blade at all. This thing can work very easily um, without a sharp blade. So, if you take, if you're going to do this, take a measuring board, a um, couple of scale packets, a pencil, and then something to scrape scales off the fish. So, I brought two brands of fish. Um, these are not wild trout, but you probably know that already. These are farmed little yearlings. And I brought a few roach just to try and mimic grayling. I couldn't find any grayling in my pike dead bait store in the freezer. Um, the, the scales on these fish, and you might like to try this before you go down to the river on these dead ones. The scales on these fish will come off relatively easy compared to a live fish because they've been frozen. Um, it's easier in that regard. It's also easier in that the mucus has gone off this fish. So you'll be able to see very quickly when you lift the scales off this dead fish. On a live fish you'll get scales and mucus and it's sometimes quite difficult, particularly with little fellas like this, to see whether you've actually got scales in the slime as you take it off. But the process is very simple. Um, you need to have ready, so imagine you're doing this to two people, it's very easy to do with one person. I've got my fish in my landing net, <coughs> it's just sitting in the margins. I'm going to write on the scale packet the date. Is the 26th today? Yeah. Okay. 26, 5, 13. So I've got a reference point for when the scale was lifted off the fish. I would put the species and I'd abbreviate it. So it's BT, brown trout. Um, I would put probably its site. So I'm not sure where we are. Um, somewhere on the Irwell. Uh, but Irwell and whatever the name of this park is. So it's absolutely identifiable back to the date, the species and where it came from. And then the final thing, when we've measured it, is going to be the length. And I would record, if I were you, length in millimetres. OK? Mm -hmm. We can do that on here, yeah. So, the next stage is the fish is in your landing net, in the margins, it comes out. Make sure this is wet. So it's literally just a quick dip into the margins. You've now got water swilling about in here. So when the fish goes on, it's not sticking. It can just slide on the water. The fish is stuck, nose against... Um, the end cap of the drain pipe okay. and then as Paul alluded to yesterday you just smooth the fish down and you're going to record fork length in here so not the total length of the fish but the fork length because there's variability in how eroded the end of the tail will be but that's a fairly standard length of fish so in this case well, it's sorry, when, you, when you say fork length you mean the bottom of the yeah. V yeah. Right, okay, yeah. So the bottom of the V, yeah. Yeah, only shallow V in this yeah. fish. So head up against the, the end cap of the gutter, smooth the fish down, and in this case that's going to come out at 160, pretty much dead, 160 millimetres. Yeah. So that can be written on our scale packet, <coughs> thus, 160. And then the next, I mean, probably as well, just to leave the fish in there, it's obviously going to be hopping around a little bit. Um, you could have a tissue or something just to hold it down, just put, it, put your hand over the top of it. Okay. This bit is a little trickier if the fish is alive, obviously. Um, but this one is not going to do too much kicking, I suspect. So, all I'm looking to do is I'm going. You remember that I was looking to take scales above the lateral line yeah. and between the back of the dorsal fin and the adipose fin. Okay? So, all I'm going to do is I'm going to scrape from head to tail and I'm just going to raise a few scales. Now, as I've said, these come out incredibly easy because the fish is frozen gather them up so you'll now have scales and an alive fish mucus yeah. on the end of your blade and then your buddy if you, today because hopefully we're doing it more than one person will have the packet held open for you you insert the blade and then you close it clamp it between your forefinger and your thumb and then retrieve the blade and now your scales are wiped on the inside of your envelope yeah. okay and that's all there is to it Fold it over, stick it in a pocket, and you've got your sample. Um, in terms of its application, I mean, you as an individual, or you with a few mates, you could be doing this uh, over a series of weeks and gathering samples. Where it might be really useful is possibly if you have, as Paul describes, some friendly competition events. So you get a gang of lads out, and if they're competent anglers, it's quite possible, I guess, they can gather a hundred fish sample very quickly. And you've now got, once you've, you've sent these off for ageing or maybe had a go yourself, um, you've got 
length data and hopefully you've got age data and you can build curves like I showed you yesterday of age against length and see how your fish are doing. Yeah. There are standard growth curves available from the Environment Agency um, with, against which you can plot the growth of your stocks. So they'll tell you whether you've got very fast growing, fast growers, average growers, less than average or very slow growers. Um, just by comparing the, the chart you've built of age against length and their standard growth curve. Could you demonstrate that scale remover again, Sean? Happily. If you don't mind. Include the lateral line scales. So I'm going to be taking a little scrape in this sort of area here, okay? So in this case, I'm using the, the cutting edge of my fairly blunt pen knife and I'm just scraping from head to tail to raise a few scales. And then it's just a quick scoop underneath the scales and the um, mucus as will be on the live fish. And then just to recap, your buddy, it's very easy to do single handed this, um, opens the, the envelope, the blade is offered in, closed onto the blade and the scales are gone and they're inside our envelope. Thus. So let's suppose this is a grayling. If, if I was taking grayling scales, I would probably aim in the shoulder region here rather than back of the dorsal. Um, I'm not sure why, I can't remember why, but it's just the way I was taught to do this 150 years ago. Um, so all I'm going to do in this case with the grayling is I'm going to, in this case roach, I'm going to take a scale and I'm just going to push it towards the tail of the fish and pop it out of its skin pocket. And in, with grayling I wouldn't take more than two scales off a fish, I think. And then I can just get my blade under those couple of loosened scales, get them off my finger, and the process is exactly the same again. So, oh look, they're stuck on my thumb, but there they are, there are the two scales that I lifted out of that fish. Okay. And again, the same sort of recording information, date, species, GR in this case if it's grayling, location and length as millimetres. <coughs> okay, and that is that. That's a good size. So we're going to punch a um, microscope slide on account of the fact that I forgot them. But it might just work. It's a bit of an old Indian trick. <laughs> That's a good scale. That one will work a treat. What I do with scale reading is I know how old I think this fish should be. So as I was explained to some of the guys earlier, I'm trying to make it fit. Um, but if you work on, the, on this principle that there's this the differential spacing between summer and winter, um, I don't know if any of you guys could pick anything out there that could be a winter. Large, so the winter we've just come out of. Very even, isn't it? It's very mm. even, yes. But is that because there's a sewage works or something nearby? Well, that's what John asked, and I don't, I don't know. I mean, I just wouldn't have thought it's going to elevate water temperatures enough to have the fish go right through winter. If I was looking for a check, I'd be looking here. Mm. There, there are four or five circuli, the, the fine lines, that are more close together. So the, the, the fish is coming out here. So remember, it's a January the first start as a mm. normal birth date, right through this first summer, which is incredibly even growth. But just here, there is there are there are literally four or five of the fine rings that are closer together, mm. and then it comes out again at the edge here. Mm. Yeah. Uh, I think, but, but as I said, the danger is that I'm trying to make it fit. The other option is, as Paul said, that it's uh, a fish of this year, 
that has broken world records and has grown to six inches in three months, which I suspect is probably not the case. <laughs> um, but it's an interesting one. It is, it's really interesting in, in the regularity of its mm -hmm. growth. It? But I think, you know, if, if I, it's a little bit more apparent in the microscope, not much. I think I'd be looking there for that first winter. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry that we're having to bodge. I forgot microscope slides, and so we're having to bodge a um, conference pass as a, <laughs> to hold the scales down. So let me bring off the um, conference pass in fact. So um, do it just to flatten the thing down so you've got it in a, a, sink, um, a flat plane so they're viewable through a microscope. So this conference pass is having to double up and it's a poor second. Um, but it, it, it is really nothing more than that. It's a case of scraping the scales out of the paper envelope, sticking them onto your microscope slide, slapping one down on top of it, and then sticking them on your microscope. I think there are probably two things I can show you with these. I, can, I mentioned yesterday this notion of replacement scales. Mm. And actually, quite interestingly, most of the scales here, and I think there are maybe seven or eight scales there, are good. There are one or two that are replacement, and I'll try and show you that in just a sec. These are two scales stuck together, but it kind of demonstrates the point if I zoom in and out. The upper one of the pair, and let's double them around, if you look at the scale that's underneath this one here, I think you'll be able to make, up as I, make out as I zoom up and down that the fine rings go right to the middle of that scale. Can you see that? Yeah. That is an original scale, that when the fish first started growing scales, that was one of its originals. This one is not an original scale, so this is a replacement scale. And if you look at the middle, the concentric ringing starts about here. Mm. So all of this is just clear tissue. So when this fish lost a scale at that point in its skin, it tried to fill the gap just by <coughs> blowing the scale up very, very quickly. And then, once it had filled the hole, it could start <coughs> growing all the morning. But at some point early in its life, it lost a scale from this point on its body. Is that clear enough? Mm -hmm. that? Yeah. So this would be called a replacement scale, and it's not a, a great deal of use for ageing, and this is an original down here. Can you see from the size of the inner ring on the replacement scale how old, how old it was when it lost that scale? Because that gives you an idea of how big the scales uh, were at that yeah, time. Yeah, roughly, but it's not very reliable. Right. I mean, it, you'd know that this was early in life, I and mean, that's about all I can say. Mm. I, you know, this is a young fish anyway, but <coughs> it's interesting whether we're getting any clearer idea from this scale. I think, um, and, but again, I, I, I could be making it up, but I think there's a, there's a winter band about there on that mm. scale. I think if you follow it from the middle and come out, it starts to narrow about here, and there are four or five of these fine rings that are called circularly closer together there, and then it widens out again. And probably if I keep talking about it, I'll convince you of that. <laughs> Because you're suddenly, oh yeah, yeah, or you might just be thinking, no, he's talking nonsense. But that's, I mean, I, that's <coughs> my, my, if my best guess would be this is a one plus fish. Uh, and if it is, they're growing quickly, these are fast <coughs> growers. Mm -hmm. So the, the thing that would be interesting to do now, we, I mean, looking at the numbers, and again, it's a bit naughty to do this, but just looking at the lengths, We've got fish of 175, then we've got a bunch of fish around 220 millimetres, this is. And then we've got one fish of 20, 285 millimetres. Now, if I was looking at those growth data from, say, a chalk stream batch of browns, I would immediately be thinking 1 plus, 2 plus, 3 plus, because that's a classic 6 inch, 10 inch, 12 inch, um, 1, 2, 3 year olds. So we'll see, maybe we'll have a look at the 8 inch fish and see if we can make anything else with those as well. That's good, there's a really nice number of scales on there. But you can see them quite clearly, can't you? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So all you have to do is remove the scales just with a scalpel. Sometimes this is a bit sharp, particularly a, a um, pointed scalpel. But just scrape away so you loosen the scales, trying not to twang them across the room. <laughs> Uh, yeah, they won't snap. Surprisingly tough, aren't they? They are mm. tough, yeah. 
and then just form a little um, a V, yeah exactly. And then tap them out onto your microscope slide. So they'll just tap down like so. We got a load of crap on there as well. Oh, I probably didn't say that word today. What are they made out of the scale? Is it chitin? It's a, it's a protein plate and then overlaid with, with calcium. This is a good time not to do too much breathing. <laughs> and again, had I brought the right tools, I would probably be using fine nosed tweezers just to tease apart any pairs or more of scales that are stuck together, like this little bunch here. I'm not sure if you can see that, but yeah. they're separated out. Um, and that's pretty well it, really. So, again, we stick our microscope slide on top to weight them down and flatten them out and box your arm off. Mm. Do, you then, do you ever dye them or anything? Or not, what doesn't, no, not it's just not it. worth doing for the likes of us really. Um, uh, and then once you've, you've used the scale, if had, you, had I not torn up this, this, on this packet, they can go back in and then they can become, if you wish to keep them, you know, a historical record of trout in your river. Mm. Um, and I think Colin asked a question yesterday about storage. As long as they're stored dry, they last for hundreds of years, just just in a paper packet. Um, and that's what you would recommend, a, a paper envelope, yeah, another envelope? Yeah, definitely the way to go. Um, yeah. But actually, on the, um, would you want to pass me that um, scalpel? For what size of fish is that? So this is 220. a uh, 220, yeah. Under the microscope, there's a very, very clearly um, yeah. evident check here, just at that point there, which is just about pick, being picked up with the camera. It's not great. But you might be able to see a differential uh, spacing between the fine rings at that point there. Just explain what a check is, Sean. Oh yeah, okay, cool. So it's it's the differential growth between summer and winter. So normally when a fish comes out of winter, that's when we, we, we define the check, when it goes from winter into summer growth. And on this fish, you can just see here that the spacing is different from the inside to the outside, if that focus would ever just hold. Sorry, we're having to bodge it a bit. But this one's actually quite quite clearly visible underneath the microscope. Um, the the thing I meant to speak about yesterday is you can see you've got all sorts of debris on here, bits of old skin tissue, and probably bits of the envelope as well. You could clean that up with with just um, a dilute bleach, um, or just wipe it off under a paper towel. It would, that would come off too, and then you, you wouldn't have anything, any sort of interference on the scale. I bet contact lens solution would probably do it. It probably would, yeah. Yeah. There's really, there's kind of one very evident check on this scale, but there isn't a second one, which I think we'd kind of be looking for. Is there not? Oh, well, you put it on again. I, I think the first check's uh, far nearer the middle of the. the the yeah. scale than, than yeah. you first pointed out. It's quite, you could like be right. There. Yeah. And yeah. There. yeah, you could be right. And that's kind of that's kind of mirrored here too. In the, in the check. It's possible, yeah. And then but that, that suggests then that the since last winter, so this spring, there's an awful lot of what's called plus growth, this area here outside the scale. So the fish of th this fish has grown very quickly since the last winter. It's weird because it's been such a cold exactly. spring. Mm -hmm. yeah. cold spring if that's yeah. the case, so maybe it's it really warm. Well. You think they might have really, that little warm spell in March, it might have really gone crazy. Mm. It, looks, it does look the water like water it. from the sewage, as you mentioned. Mm. It's got to be enough heat at the minute. If you, I mean, this yeah. one, this yeah. scale. Well, can you see that's it? a good point. It's, kind of it looks like. it, it's down here, because it's upside down. But this area here shows really very, very quick growth from that check there. 
you can just make out it's not very clear on the on the camera. The other thing is, I mean, they might well be feeding away on something that you don't necessarily imitate very well on a fly rod. So your fishing results with the rod and line might not be very good, but they might be absolutely filling the boots just in, yeah. in a part of the river that's not very susceptible, susceptible to fly fishing. You know? yeah. What, with minnows or something? Yeah, yeah. Is it, is, it, is it full of crayfish, this thing? It's full of minnows. <laughs> no, it's not. Crayfish tend not to thrive in the area. There are crayfish there. And they don't thrive in the area. What there is in that area of river is huge numbers of freshwater shrimp. Yeah. Mm. Under the microscope, this one has definitely got two checks on it, and Paul, you were right. So if we come from the outside, so working the wrong way around, this is this spring's growth since mm. last winter. It's really, really clear. There's a check there where you suddenly go from slow winter growth to this spring growing madly, and there is another one inside here mm. in this sort of area. But again, I'm sorry, this, this thing is not done, the camera's not demonstrating the point very well. It's, it's worth looking at under, under the microscope. And then we've got one more fish to look at, which I think would be really interesting to see what the nearly 12 inch fish is going to look like, its scales. Even on, on the TV screen, this actually seems quite an obvious one to me. And it's more so, I would suggest, under the microscope and actually bizarrely it absolutely blows my notion out of the water because this fish is 285 mils so this is nearly a 12 inch fish but I think there's a single check here mm. yeah. yeah and then there's an, only another one there yeah so you've got I would suggest very obvious summer growth through here winter summer growth out here I mean, there is a little bit of a wrinkle here, but I don't think that's going to count as a winter. I think it carries on and it hits a second winter there, which is only last year, 12, 13. This is the fish that had the Arnold Schwarzenegger shoulders. Okay. And it was extremely fat as well, so it, it could be a super, you know... A shooter. Yeah. 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 A shooter. Well, you want to get some of those for the Wandle. We've got them. <laughs> <laughs> What <laughs> in the back of the car? <laughs> <laughs> What's a shooter? I think oh, one. So uh, the opposite of a runt. So you know, you, you get you, like, you're sort of normal growers and your runts and your right. shooters. Um, mm. And this, I mean, this is a huge fish for a two plus. That's absolutely gigantic. If people can be bothered reading through the fairly technical document that I put together about genetics in in trout and brown trout. Uh, there's a little bit of info in there about just how variable between individual... The brown trout are surprisingly variable for a number of characteristics, and a lot of that is based on the variability in the gene pool. So they have unusual um, coefficients of variance, which is a, you know, it's a statistical way of scaling how much variation exists within a particular trait. So, you know, most things, and beasts and ourselves included, have fairly small percentage coefficients of variance in the sort of the you know, the few tens of, you know, that sort of percentage point range, but brown trout, it's not unusual to find characteristics that vary by 600% or more, more or whatever. So mm -hmm. it, it's another reason that preserving the diversity is important because you need these varied individuals to make the best of changing conditions. But this could be, couldn't all the population be this? Could, well, we've not, we've not really seen it, have we? Because, because this, this is the same age as the previous fish. The but, first um, one you but that, that first second one fish, it was, it was, it was okay. We thought there were two growth rings, but there was only one. Definitely, definite, one. definite. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it it would be extraordinary if the owl had fish that are, you know, ten inches as one plus. Yeah. That yeah. would be yeah. absolutely yeah. incredible. Mm. Mm. Doesn't sound bad, does it? I think mm. it sounds right. The downstream sewage. <laughs> <It's> sewage. <laughs> and there's minnows. Don't forget, I mean, relative to things like grayling, they don't grow anywhere near as fast in that early stage. No. Um, there's a very different, clear difference between that. But that's worth having. I mean, that's, that, this looks a very clear scale to me, and this pool is more like the stuff I showed yesterday, which were, hmm. you know, the sort of um, the simplest ones I could ever find. Well, it's a bigger fish, so you've got a little bit of more work to work with, really, haven't you, in terms of that? that can't swallow your fly. Yeah. <laughs> You just have to get some scale samples off, uh, off the usual trout you catch. Well, mm. <laughs> the Morrisons. Uh. <laughs> so cutting over is, a, is the kind of thing that you'll see if ever you bother looking at chub and dace. And you can see it really clearly here, which is you've got these fine rings coming around here, and then this one cuts across them. Mm. So in chub and dace, that happens when they start growing in the spring, usually in May, and 
um, that period, that one episode can be can be um, shown up by a single line of cutting over. Uh -huh. So they can be really difficult to age, can Chavan Dave? That is cutting over, which you don't see very often on the trail.